everybody. Welcome back to our third anniversary spectacular. We are live at the Regent Theater in Arlington. Now, my next comedian is a host at Dirty Water TV, which is on Nesson. He was on Comics Come Home with Dennis Leary this past November, and he was the winner of the Boston International Comedy Festival as Best New Comic. Please welcome Dave Russo. <laughs> for the band, everybody. How about it for the band, everybody? And we got Mr. Steve Katzo. Steve Katzo, one more time for Steve Katzo, everybody. Fantastic. This is, uh, you know, he mentioned I did uh, Comics Come Home with Dennis Leary uh, this year, and I was very excited. And my friends, including Steve, actually threw me a surprise party for being chosen to do the show. And I, I get to, I've never had a surprise party. Well, I've had one surprise party. Uh, some people like to call it an intervention. You know. <laughs> But it's nice, we actually have a police officer on duty. That's how big the show is getting. And, uh, and I have a lot of respect for the police. My, my grandfather was a criminal. Uh, I'll tell you one thing though, I don't understand why the police can't capture more drug dealers because these people, they're so blatant about it, right? You see them all the time driving on the highways in their brand new cars, right in their license plate, dealer. I'll wait till you get it, people, no big deal. All right. So here we are at the Regent Theater. The last time I performed at the Regent Theater, I'll never forget, because in the front row was the largest guy with the hugest bald head I've ever seen in my life. And he starts making fun of my height. And I'm like, well, dude, look at the size of your head. I mean, I bet if I take a look at your driver's license, all I'd see is one big eyeball. That guy beat the crap out of me, people. Like, still to this day, I have those slow motion, bionic man running nightmares. It's like, the bald guy's coming! What's up, dog? It's all right, I grew up with an older sister. I was like, you son of a... <laughs> That's all right, that ever happens again, I'll just go Robert De Niro on him. I'll just turn to Robert De Niro. I don't say anything, I just do the face. That's pretty. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is nice doing the comedy, you know, as entertainers, you know, my buddy Joey Voice was singing, uh, What a Wonderful World. As entertainers, I get to be all, I get to travel, and I've actually been all around the world. Well, I, I've been to Epcot Center. And, <laughs> and I do enjoy it. it. It's funny, though, because uh, I learned in my act, I'll tease the guys, but in my act, I won't do any negative jokes towards women in my act, I won't. Because first of all, I'm single, and I need one of you people. Uh, <laughs> also, I grew up with an older sister who tortured the hell out of me. I, I don't know what's about the ladies out there. You have younger brothers. You, you love to put makeup and crap on us. You like to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah I was five. I didn't know any better. You know, I, I felt beautiful. I mean, <laughs> yeah, thank God she made me wear high heels. Right now, I get pretty good calves. I'm older, I'm finding out there's upswings to having an older sister. I was taught things a lot of men in this room are not taught unless you grew up with an older sister. Like, ladies, I can do a, a one-handed round-off. Yeah, and a French braid. What a weird thing is, though, sometimes when I laugh real hard, I, I tinkle. <laughs> Let me ask the ladies this, is the sports bra uncomfortable? I've only had it on like once or twice, is that uncomfortable? <laughs> I was told it was a man who invented the bra. Now, ladies, on behalf of all the men in this room, no possible way a man could have invented the bra, because if we did, we would have graded it differently. You know? Yeah, because like a D would have been an A. Yeah. yeah, and a C, screw it, would have been an A. B 
beast it would have been a bee, Asian lady. Uh, <laughs> no, I love the Asian women, I do. They just so, you know, my height. Uh, <laughs> Right, they found that offensive. All right, fair enough. It's comedy. Don't take this stuff seriously, people. How you doing? What is your name, young, young Asian woman? I don't want people to get mad. Tina. Tina, no kidding. That, that's my dad's name. All right, see <laughs> Are you a married woman, Tina? No, I'm, uh, I'm mingling. You're mingling? Ooh, that sounds like you're horny to me. I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> I'm only being honest. That's good. See, my parents are giving me a hard time because I am not married. My parents have been married for 45 years, people, 45 years. Don't applaud, it's not my dad's idea, thank you. But 45 years, Tina, right? Wow, that must seem like the car payment that never ended, huh, 45 years? I've learned one thing, guys, if you're happily married after 45 years, five years, 105 years, if you're happily married that long, definitely means that the husband is scared. Crap of the wife, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Right, because ladies out there, never once did I ever hear my mom say, wait till your father gets home, young man, right? But if my dad were babysitting, he'd be like, you better hope your mother doesn't find out about this crap. <laughs> we are both in trouble. I need my allowance for bowling on Tuesday. My mom's a tough lady, Tina. My mom was president of women's softball for 25 years. My mom, yep, lesbian. Uh, <laughs> I mean, 25 years ago, they were called tomboys, but you're not gonna fool me, no. She would find Tina very attractive, yes. <laughs> Once again, people think I'm, I'm teasing my mom. My mom's got three kids, although I'm pretty sure she's bipolar, I'll tell you that. <laughs> like when I turned 25, my mom kicked me out of the house, told me I could never move back in until I had a job and a note from a mental health professional. <laughs> I'm like, where the hell am I supposed to get a job? <laughs> Now she coaches the women's soccer. I love female athletes, but a woman's soccer player? Jeez, I'll never date a girl who can kick a ball with that much accuracy and velocity, all right? <laughs> I've been doing this comedy thing about 15 years, and I appreciate the fact that some of you crowd is finally coming and listening to how fast my jokes are, because you're a little slow at the beginning, thank you. Public school people. Uh, I did comedy uh, for 15 years. Uh, people say, how'd you get into comedy? I go, well, I was 4'11", 79 pounds my freshman year in high school. 4'11", 79 pounds. And when I was growing up, bullying was legal. <laughs> I got rolled up in rugs. You ever been rolled up in a rug? You're like, I'm getting rolled up in a rug. You gotta be kidding me, I'm getting rolled up in a rug. I'm gonna sneeze and poop my pants. Yeah, my mom actually had to homeschool me. You know what homeschooling is when your parents teach you at home? I'm, I'm the product of homeschooling. I don't want to brag, but I, I graduated first in my class. <laughs> I was prom king and queen. Yep, every day for me is a high school reunion. I, I'm gonna end it on this. I, uh, in 2004, when the Red Sox won the World Series, I was out in Las Vegas, and uh, Mr. Las Vegas, Wayne Newton, saw me perform, asked me to audition for a TV show called The Entertainer. 5,000 people across America auditioned for it. They narrowed it down to 10 people. I was one of the 10 people chosen to compete for $1 million. Now, I grew up in the Boston area. I'll stab you in the face for like a buck and a half, right? <laughs> and after 10 weeks on the ETV series, The Entertainer, I'm proud to say I was runner-up uh, for $1 million, my friends. Runner-up for a million bucks. Yeah, yeah, not bad, right? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much why I'm here, trying to make you people laugh in Arlington. But I tell you, I tease about that, but I loved it. But I, I, I got a contract. I didn't get the million dollar contract. I got a contract, and I lived in Vegas. Uh, uh, it was a six month contract. I lived there for two years, and uh, and paid off all my bills, made some money. But I still lived in Vegas for two years. I came home. I had a physical, and my cholesterol was like 710. Is that good? <laughs> some of you people are Greek. Is that good? 710? No. My doctor is from India, Dr. Shah. She tries to be funny, she's been to my shows, leaves me a message on my answer machine. She's like, David! <laughs> Dr. Shah, your cholesterol's very, very bad. You should be dead, give me a call. <laughs> David! Are you dead? <laughs> give me a call, 718-686-4643. If I'm not there, you can text me at 1-888-952. Just look outside the window, I'll be in the bushes with a bow and arrow. I'm teasing, David, I'm not that type of Indian. Uh, <laughs> I 
All right, uh, that's pretty much my time uh, for you folks. Uh, real quick, I have a website, uh, DaveRusso.net, not DaveRusso.com, that's a plumber in Ohio. And uh, I have a new CD coming out, uh, and I was supposed to bring it on stage, but I, I've been drinking. And, uh, but I sell it uh, for 10 bucks. Uh, all the money goes to charity. Uh, she's a dancer uh, in Las Vegas, and uh, good friends with Tina. Uh, thank you, my name's Dave Russo. Gotta go, thank you. Dave Russo, everybody. How Cheers, about thank it? You, thank you. Now, Dave, before you go, in my trusty notes here, yes. it says that you were uh, on NBC's The Today Show. What did you do for them? Uh, they actually, well, uh, the NBC uh, Today Show actually caught me doing a show in Faneuil Hall at a club, and uh, I had a Red Sox hat and a Red Sox shirt on, and I did a funny joke, so they put me on. Other than that, I really wasn't on that show. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. But it looks gentlemen. good for the resume. Dave Russo. Thank you. Cheers, right. everybody. Hey, we'll congrats. be right back right after this. Hey, congrats on uh, I think it was great. Thank you. 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 Thank you.